Hello everybody and welcome to chapter 11 of our Python 3 basics tutorial series. In this video we're going to be building on the last video which was functions and in this video we're going to be adding function parameters. Basically what parameters are are kind of like an extended variable and it allows developers to create a function, put in function parameters, and this allows the programmer that is using the function to kind of customize the function itself. So let's say, for example, we're going to make a simple, a simple calculator, for example. So let's do define addition. And to do this addition, we're going to have number one and num two. And then we round it off with a colon, and then we add our code. So addition is going to use num1 and num2 as its parameters. And then now we can write our code. So we're going to say the answer equals num1 plus num2, whatever those are. And then we can return the answer. And now what we're going to do is we come down here and, like I said, kind of functions are like an extended variable. We actually, you're going to see a lot of times where people use a variable and they assign a function to that variable. And what that does is assigns the return of that function to the variable. So we could say x equals addition 5, 6, and then we can print x. So if we save and run that, we see that we get 11. Now, there is no limit to the number of parameters that you can have. So you could say num1, num2, num3, num4, plus num3, plus num4, like that. 5, 6, 5, 6, 6, and 5. Run that again. And we get 22, and so on. Now, say though you had a, you were developing a, you know, website creating program, and you had a function that would create this website. Like, say for example, if you're familiar with WordPress, you can create a WordPress site in, you know, just a matter of about 10, 15, 20 minutes because when you download and install something like WordPress, there's a lot of default things. So you have default buttons, you have default text, font, size, all this kind of stuff, colors, everything. They have some sort of default. And then later on, if you choose to, you can change it, right? And so here, for example, we can see we've got num1, num2, num3, num4. And at least with addition, it doesn't necessarily matter what order these parameters are in. But think about if instead of addition, we had define uh, website, and then we had all kinds of questions like font, color, let's see, uh, font, background, we'll do background, color, uh, font, size, font, color, and so on. Obviously with a website there's, you know, hundreds of variables. So, but we're just making a simple one with font, background, color, font size, and font color, just uh, for example. Now, let me add this under case there, or under uh, underscore. And then in this, you, we'll just say print font, and actually let's do font like that, and then print <clears throat> BG for background, and we'll just copy and paste this, copy, paste, and then print font size, and we'll copy and paste, and finally print font color and font underscore color. Okay, so, oh, and let's spell print, right? Print. Okay. So this function right now we're just printing it out, but let's say you wanted to, you were going to do something with it. You're going to create, you know, the, all of these, you know, characteristics to the website. Now, for a programmer, like let's say you've developed this and you want to share it with somebody. Well, first of all, and it, you know, for a developer to use this function, they're going to need to do like website and then font. We'll say is Times New Roman TNR. Background color, we're going to say is black. 
Actually, the background color probably should be white, not black. Font size 11 and font color will be white. Or I mean black. Okay. So this, currently, if we save and run this, is going to print out for us the font, the background color, font size, font color. Okay. But like we were saying, with a website, there might be hundreds of variables. You might be able to see here that this could get tedious really, really fast. Also, it's worth noting that it's you have to, whatever order these parameters are in, you have to retain that exact same order when you define the function. The only way around that would be something like this. So if you did website, and let's just, let me, uh, we'll copy and paste this. So copy, paste. But what if we black to the front accidentally, and as a developer we forgot the order. So we save and run this, and now we see that instead, actually let's comment this out just so we can see very clearly. And instead we have font black, background TNR, font size white, font color 11. Obviously you can't have a you know font type black, right? So this created a problem for us. So one thing that you can do as a developer, at least, to sort of get a handle on this is instead of, you know, you can do this and put them in the order that they're supposed to be in, but you could also do something like this. You could say font underscore color equals black, and then you could do font equals TNR, and then you can do this background color equals white and just for the record when you have like a big list what you can do is you can hit the enter key and you can bring things down like this okay anyway font color background color and then font size like this all right so then we can save and run this and now even though we changed the order a little bit we do get tnr for times new roman background white font size 11 font color black but again, we still kind of run into trouble here because here we only have four four function parameters. But what if we had a hundred, literally a hundred? So some of these some developers make massive sized functions. So one of the larger functions that I know of are functions for matplotlib, which is a graphing module for Python. It's highly customizable. So you can kind of think of it as if you're you know building a house or something. The house has a ton of options that you could have with the house. You know, you've got colors, you've got room sizes, room shapes, you've got where the windows are, where the plugs are, where everything is. All kinds of things, right? But you as, like, say you, you're getting a house built, if you go to a builder, he's not going to ask you, they're going to ask you a lot of questions for customization, but they're not, he's not going to ask you, um, what type of wood do you want on the house? And he's probably not going to ask you what type of shingles do you want. You know, you, you can customize that if you wanted, but he's not going to, you know, ask you these things by default, right? But if you request them, you can always request because you're building the house, right? And so he can customize those things, but in general, he's not going to ask you about every single thing, every single part of that house, what kind of wire, what gauge wires to use, blah, 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 blah. He's not going to ask you all of those questions. But if you requested them, they could be customized to exactly what you wanted. So in a situation like that, even though we're not building a house, but you can at least think of it in like terms of like matplotlib, where you've got color, line thickness, plot markers, font size, font colors, axes colors, all of this stuff. There's a lot of options, but you should at least have a default option that makes it very simple. Maybe someone just wants to do a very simple graph and that be it whereas other people are often occupied with making it look very good at the same time for presentability reasons. So that's where function uh, parameter defaults come into play. So here we have to define all of these. If we don't define them, say for example we don't define font, when we try to run that we're going to get an error because I lost my mouse, here it is, <laughs> because we're missing one required argument and that one is font and so it's not going to be able to run. So as a developer, we can take this into consideration. And instead, what we can do is we can say font equals, and we can say here TNR. We can say background color equals white. And we can do these enters again, so to save some space. 
font size equals 11 and font color equals black and what we've done here is see we've created this function website so now what we can do is we can come down here and instead what we can do is we can just call website we don't have to define anything so we'll save and run that and we bring it over here and now we see we have everything is already defined for us. TNR, background is white, font size 11, and so on. Now, as a programmer, if we're using this website function, we see that you know we have all these defaults, but let's say we don't like a white background. We actually want a gray background. Okay, so instead, what we can do is we can say background, background color, and we can say instead gray like this. And now, when we save and run that, we get here. We have everything else defined as we have by default, but then we were able to change the background color to gray instead. So, for the most part, if you're creating functions and they have a decent number of parameters, probably anything more than two parameters, I would say you definitely want to create function parameter defaults that way, anytime you're using it or someone else is using it, they can just use the defaults very simply and only need to customize what they need to. Now, if you only have two parameters, for example, let's say you only had background color and font color, then you want to have to define them all out like this, because if there are defaults, you do have to type out the entire thing. Or, well, I guess actually you probably wouldn't have to. Let's confirm that with Python 3, however. Let's say this only has two parameters to it. You've got font and background color. Let's say we just do this. Let's say we do TNR and gray. Let's see if we can get away with that one. Oh, no. Well, we got away with it for the most part. Font, background color. We just can't be printing these out. So actually, if there's only two, then you could still define defaults and the person could still type them in like this. So actually, you know, if you're creating a function and you're planning to use it yourself or even share it, it just makes a lot of sense to go ahead and define defaults. Now, again, though, at least for my purposes, if, if I only have a couple variables here, I usually don't put in defaults. But if you're creating a function that has just gobs of parameters, and then it just kind of makes sense to go ahead and put in the defaults, and then that way the people can just customize exactly what they want. Now, that said, don't forget that if you didn't provide defaults, when you write out that function, don't forget that you have to have exactly the same number of parameters and they have to be in perfect order. Or you have to say the actual name of the parameter that you're talking about, and then but you still need just as many parameters. Or you can use function parameter defaults and then call the specific function that you're trying to change. Or you can write out all of the functions if you want to. So, kind of a long one, uh, chapter 11 on functions, but hopefully that helps a lot of you guys out and girls. There are a lot of parts to functions, but they're extremely useful to use, and it's a good idea to know all about function, uh, functions, parameters, and their defaults. So that's going to conclude chapter 11. In chapter 12, what we're going to be talking about is global and local sort of variables, because once you start using functions, you're going to start using variables, and you're going to somewhat quickly realize that variables don't quite work in the way that you would have hoped and sometimes you're going to find that even though you swear you, de you define that variable you see you've defined that variable you still it's not working it says it's not defined and you can't figure it out so anyway that's what we'll be covering in the next chapter as always thanks for watching